I am 62 years old. My reputation, my good character, and my good name is the one that I treasure most. This is my father, the late superintendent, school superintendent of summer school of arts and trade, Perpetuo Tadjaman. He brought me in summer to attend the seminary because he knows some people over in summer with the approval of my mother after my graduation in elementary. My mother is the one really introduced me in the Catholic Church because there is a chapel near our house. When I went to summer, Urbano is with me. That's where he met Mary Jean. If one of your family member is a priest, that is a very like a status symbol in the Philippines. In my family, we have nuns. This is the uh, picture of my first year bats. Uh, we started 16, and this is the picture taken during our convocation with those uh, young ladies from Milagrosa Academy. Before graduation, this picture was taken with Chito Ronyo, Supromio Macaranas, and Robin Ong. My classmates, this concrete stair is leading to the lobby of the seminary, to the main building, where this picture also was taken with me is my classmates Paul Gavorni and Josapat Gutang after graduation. This side of the building of the seminary is where our study hall is located, and the chapel on top of that is also the dormitory. Where this picture also was taken after our graduation, and that dormitory are for first year and second years. With me is Oscar Taniedo, the brother of my sister-in-law, the wife of Arthur. This picture was taken only last September 27. Oh boy, very, very big difference. I cannot already remember what part of this, but this is D. We're going to the auditorium. This is the corridor uh, where our study uh, hall was located, and this is the rectory where we do our dining. And this is where our classroom is located, and on top of that is also a dormitory. For the first time, I was able to come back after four years in Samar. And uh, this is the wedding of my brother, uh, Urbano Tajuman, and married Mary Jean Cruz Dionisio. She is the daughter of the eldest sister of Maximiano Cruz and Chaplain Cruz. Uh, these two Cruz, Cruzes are alumnus of St. Vincent de Paul Seminary. Maximiano became the, also became a rector and also the bishop of Calvario Diocese. These are the uncle of my sister-in-law. Like some very poor school church, we celebrate our anniversary every 28th of October. And the last time we celebrated it is 2014. Again, uh, the Catholic Church uh, celebrate or they have this kind of fiestas and uh, it become now a tradition and uh, they always do that every year and every year. Like also the uh, church, the Pate Bible Church, become some Bali Polish Square Church. We celebrate our anniversary every October 28th, every year, every year. Some Bali Polish Square Church or Pate Bible Church was founded by the Reverend Bishop René Ramientos way back of 1985 in Glendale. This is uh, Sister Lourdes Estrada. She is a very uh, close family friend because she knows my father and I, I know her. Okay, when she was invited to attend the uh, festival or the peace of St. Vincent de Paul in the seminary this week, so I asked her if she can take some picture. Thank you, Sister Lourdes Estrada. September 27, 2019, uh, she was uh, invited to attend the festival. Oh, this reminds me. This is the small chapel in St. Vincent de Paul Seminary, where every day we attend the Holy Mass at 7 o'clock in the morning. For the past four years, I've been doing that. 
So, every day, every day. Food and energy, the most important commodities in the future. We should do some actions in research and development and innovation for the future of our children's children. From 2001 to 2007, I did my independent research and development and innovation in aquaculture from 2003 to 2007. I transferred to Aqua Farming Tech Incorporated to test my Bridgestock Red and Golden Orange Tilapia with the approval of Rocky Friends to test it in this farm. He is also the founder and CEO. When I was in Aqua Farming Tech, I collaborated with Rocky Friends in research and development and innovation in intensive culture system in aquaculture. Most of it are out of the box ideas and the experimentation we have done was recorded in videos and in my personal journals. Rocky Friends and me, Efren Tejuman, had done some innovations never been tried in aquaculture. Rocky and me is the same age we were born in 1957. We are the baby boomer. Aqua Farming Tech is the definitive leader in the industry state of the art aquaculture operations are conducted from the two farms encompassing 120 acres. Always an industry innovator. Aqua Farming Tech is the first farm with more than 60 tanks. One of the first farms to build above the ground cement tanks and the first farm to utilize a mechanical aerator to improve the oxygenation of the water, the first farm to develop and implement method of recycling water, and the first farm to generate significant percentage of its power from solar, and the first farm to self-manufacture its own feed, and the only farm indoors and accredited by the state of California to do and accept training and education of people about intensive culture system in aquaculture. In a world with increasingly limited land for growing food, we invest in agricultural enterprises that produce the highest possible yield per acre. We also leverage that strength by using the most efficient energy resources on the planet. It's no secret that some of the smartest investors in the world are betting on the development of highly efficient methods of growing food in smaller spaces. People like George Soros, Warren Buffett, and Bill Gates have seen the numbers and added farmland to their portfolios. Here's what they know. The world's population is projected to be 40% higher by 2050 than it is today. That's not far down the road, and yet our farmland is shrinking every year, an estimated worldwide equivalent of 40% of California's agricultural land is lost every 18 months, which will result in a dramatic increase in the cost of food. But there's hope and opportunity. There are methods of farming that can address these frightening numbers and help feed a hungry planet while generating profits for forward-thinking investors. In short, a chance to do well by doing good. In this respect, New Global Energy Business Unit, Aqua Farming Tech, has been at the forefront of developing and implementing the most advanced sustainable methods of producing premium seafood since 1993. Its operations are located just east of Palm Springs in the heart of the Coachella Valley in California. When Aqua Farming Tech started, global aquaculture accounted for less than 10% of seafood consumption. Now it's about 40%. The United States imports about 86% of its seafood, only half of which is wild caught. In fact, what looks like a brilliant idea now had its critics 20 years ago, as our aqua farming manager, industry legend, Rocky French explains. When we started, uh, everybody was uh, thinking that we were crazy because uh, we were trying to build fish farm in the desert. It turned out this is the very best place to start fish farming. But as ideal as the Coachella Valley is for growing tilapia, this type of farming also has its pitfalls. In California and elsewhere, other fish farms have shut down as a result of three persistent issues. We're fortunate that Rocky and the rest of our technical team have met these challenges. High density type of fish farming, you're faced with like three major problems. Uh, electricity, feed, and water. In our case, uh, we're able to mitigate our problem by putting a solar array. We save about, uh, actually we save about 80 to 90% of our electric bill already. The second uh, issue was water use. And of course, in the farm, 
We're doing recirculation. We pump the water, it goes into our reservoir, gets uh, cleaned up by the water vegetation. Well, one of the major costs of uh, fish production is feed. We figure that if we could build our own uh, feed mill, design our own feed, and have better control on what type of ingredients that we could put in the feed, this would be a major uh, contribution to the production of uh, good quality, uh, sustainable type of fish. In addition to producing our own feed, Aqua Farming Tech has developed a proprietary fish feeding methodology that is projected to save up to 70% of the overall feed cost. The program involves feeding our fish green algae for the first four months in the grow out ponds. In their natural environment, tilapia, which are vegetarian, feed on nutrient rich algae and other aquatic plants. This sustainable technique dramatically lowers the feed cost and the oxygen producing action of the algae reduces electricity costs by diminishing the need to run mechanical paddle wheels to aerate the water during the day when the electricity rates are at their highest. By successfully solving critical cost issues that confront fish farming in this area, we lead the industry in tilapia farming, and we are in a position to acquire or lease other California fish farms as they have closed. Because aqua farming tech has perfected high density aqua farming, our yields are much higher per acre than traditional fish farming. Most farms yield about 1,200 to 1,500 fish per acre, while we average 30 to 35,000 fish per acre. Good evening, uh, my fellow student, and I'm really uh, glad that uh, the survival school came to me. And I would like to share something to you, in which uh, Pastor Hector, our senior pastor, when we first met in my first year over here, uh, actually, uh, I don't expect really that I will be part of this uh, Bible Institute. When Pastor uh, Noni, who is now the associate pastor of our senior pastor, when I met him, he said to me, uh, you want to uh, do some voluntary job in uh, like helping uh, uh, some construction in the church? And he asked me, uh, you go to church? Yeah. But before, I'm not really that active in church. And I 
share something to him that I, you know, when I was young, uh, back in the Philippines, our house is near a uh, church, a small chapel, a Catholic church. And I used to go over there. I became a sacristan, serving the priests. Uh, you know, uh, when they uh, held the Mass, uh, you were there, you know, holding his key and like that. And then my father uh, told my mother, maybe Ephraim can become a priest. <laughs> so, anyway, to make my story short, my father was assigned back in summer uh, to become a school superintendent of the trade school over there. And he brought me over there. I'm from the Son, so I went to the summer with Sobisaya place. I don't understand any language over there. Because the language is a desire, and I am uh, speak together. And then he told me to go over there and have a vacation, but I found out he's already talking to the rector of the seminary. Then I was interviewed, take some examination, and I pass it. Let's go and uh, the first time I went over here, I'm really uh, well versed about Pentecostal uh, doctrine. So when I went over here for the first time, I heard those people speaking in tongues. So I said, what's this? <laughs> Well, uh, and then I started looking at the Bible, and then this gift was there. So I said, well. So I became interested, that way. And then Pastor Hector, while we're doing our uh, work there in the city, uh, we're doing some work over here, because uh, Pastor Noni told me, okay, let's have Pastor Hector to build up the church. Because actually, uh, the condition of the church is not like this before. Since you don't have any values in you, can you uh, just look at the church? You see, like a. Uh, maybe I can call myself the first custodian of this church under Pastor Hector. So I sleep in the car for the, for the first month because I cannot commit to him to be a custodian in this church because I have also my own agenda. I told him I will stay only in LA for a very short time. So I start talking about, uh, because I came from the uh, farm, do some research over there. And this feast that I'm talking about, Pastor Hector, is the feast that was served by Jesus Christ the multitude. See, this is the feast that St. Peter is feasting in the Sea of Galilee, and this is Tilapia. Well, this is what I, I'm doing uh, back in the farm. And then Pastor Hector told me, okay, forget about this thing that you're talking about. First, learn about this is Christ. So I said, okay. Then now, and finally, I accepted to be a custodian, so I entered the hall, at the, uh, our hall over there. And, you know, one of the rooms over there I'm staying. We can, it's a bodega actually. So you cannot even find me there, because there's so much uh, trust that's over there. And then Pastor Ronnie and me started helping and uh, reclaiming room by room. And then Pastor Hector told me about his vision about his church. That is, we're just having this kind of lands, castle thing, and he's talking about, you know, I'm I have this kind of vision that someday there will be a lot of pastors over here. That there will be a school, like a Bible school. Because he even asked me, Ephraim, do you want to attend the Bible school? In LA, you pay the bishop for me. I said, uh, later, later. And then finally it came into being that this Bible school is now in existence. And I'm so happy to be part of the uh, pioneers. Actually, you guys are really part of the cream of the crop. We have to sacrifice because this thing that we started where to finish it. And the vision of our pastor, he called me the big brother. Sometimes I really, uh, he cannot understand me sometimes. You know, we have some differences in life that we class. However, like Pastor Noni, it's also uh, sometimes uh, 
we cannot understand Pastor Hector if you will know Pastor Hector before four years ago. He is totally become better and better now. Totally a different person. And like Pastor Hector said, that I'm a different person also. And like before. Because we're trying to push our own agenda. So we, once you push your own agenda, nothing will happen. It's like to serve. If you're going to push your own agenda, you cannot serve that. And when I'm looking in this, uh, in our school, it says Los Angeles Ministerial Bible School, lungs. And what is lung? It is the sacrificial animal that, you know, the chosen people is sacrificing that to get something. Because a lot of people think when you sacrifice something, you lose, you know, it's like, why I have sacrificed my life for this guy? Why are you doing it? Because you know that you're doing it for the sake of what? Gaining some consideration also. And this sacrifice sometimes you give something, you give up something that you balance. Like for example last year, going here in the fall of the night, we're sacrificing. And some are not here because they're sick. But we have to go on. See? And if we, if you people, especially the young, young students of this school, I'm looking forward that you will be the first pastors that under Pastor Hector is dreaming about. You will start something that's beautiful. Because we started something already that we know is beautiful. Yeah? You know, uh, I was looking at the scripture. They say prophecy. When you prophesy something, there is what they call short part prophecy and a long prophecy. Our vision before, maybe we can call a short prophecy. And it's now fulfilled. We have our Bible school. Pastors are coming here. We're not even inviting them. They come here, and you know what? When I was trying to uh, remember those those days, I'm telling myself, I was laughing. Pastor Hector asked, is talking about having a Bible school, and how many people he got? Not even 30. See? Sometime back, uh, one of our uh, uh, members is already, already up here, and I was there taking the, the, uh, the video, and she's asking me, are we, when are we going to start? You can start now, there is no more people. It's all about us. When we pass the 50 attendance, we are so happy. And now, 100 from 30, it tripled, or actually tripled. And I am so happy that uh, for four years, I am part of this. And a lot of people don't know. And when I came here, uh, what I see only here is in remembrance of me. Of what? This thing is not here. So, Pastor Hector said, Okay, Emperor, can you put back the sign of Four Church? What really it stands for? Like Jesus Christ. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But I said, okay. So we start shopping, looking for some uh, letters. And then uh, I said, okay. Uh, we can make there, uh, because I, I would like to uh, make the, uh, the thing like something that's really special. So I said, okay, I'm going to carve it one by one out of labor. So I sacrifice for each letter that we have over there to do it. Then I started making the cross. And most of the members are even laughing at me saying, what are you doing? I'm going to make a cross in front. And those members, I, I found out, they don't, they don't know, they don't have a cross in front. That a cross over there that they know fell down already. 
So they're not, they're not observing. So Pastor Hector said, what kind of person are you going to put? How big it is? I said, okay. The, I was thinking, they're asking how big the cross is. I said, okay, it will be 12 feet by 8 feet. I can put somebody there and crucify him. <laughs> well, anyway. So the sacrifices that we're making now is what? We're seeing it, the fruit of our labor. And, this, and the fruit of our labor is like, it takes a long time before you can see the fruit. It's like you. So the sacrifices that we're making trying to be what? A soldier of God. Because we will be the frontliner in really evangelizing the word of God. So I would, like, I would like to share something to you that 12 years ago, this was shared to me by my friend who is a Korean. He's a Christian. And we're doing something really crazy. And because of faith, we try to do something that's really, for everybody, it's really crazy. Actually, this uh, story is about a... Uh, actually, this was... The one who wrote it is anonymous, and they say this is the one of the sermon of the preacher. And this story is about this deck of cards. I would like to show something to you. Because a lot of people sometimes judge people because of what they're doing. And this young soldier, okay, who was in the bathhouse all alone on one Sunday morning, it was quiet that day. The guard and the mortars and landmines, for some reason, hadn't made a noise. This young soldier knew it was Sunday, the holiest day of the week. He was sitting there. He got out. He got something in his hand. And this is the deck of earth. And laid them across his back. And then, there's an army sergeant. He came in and asked, Why aren't you with the rest of the platoon? The soldier replied, I thought I would stay behind and spend some time with the Lord. The sergeant said, Looks like you're going to play a deck of cards. You're a card because you're a deck of cards. The soldier said, No, sir. Since we are allowed to have Bibles or other spiritual books in this country, I decided to talk to the Lord by studying this deck of cards. Wow, that's really heavy. Okay. And then this young soldier started to show to the sergeant. And the sergeant in this building said, How oh, are you have to do a lot of explaining to me? And then this young soldier started showing something to this sergeant. He said, you see, sir, when I look at the AIDS, it reminds me that there is only one God, the God that created heaven and earth. And when I see the two, it represents the two parts of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And when I see the three, it reminds me of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the four stands for the four evangelists who wrote the Bible. They are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And when they see the five, it reminds, reminds me of the five virgins. There were ten, but only five of them were glorified. And when I see the six, it reminds me that God created heaven and earth in six days. And on the seventh, he rested, and that is the Sabbath day. And when I see the eight, it reminds me of Noah and his wife, and his three sons and their wives. These are the eight righteous people that were saved by God when he, what, when the great flood, and it's the first time that God destroyed earth. And I see the nine. It reminds me of the lepers. There are nine of them. There are ten of them. And nine did not even give thanks to Jesus. 
And when I see the ten, it represents the Ten Commandments that was God gave to Moses on the tablet of the stone. And when I see the jar, it's a reminder of Satan, of God, first angel, that he got kicked out of heaven for his slight and wicked ways, and is now the joker of eternal hell. And when I see the queen, it stands for the Virgin Mary. And when I see, I see the king, stands for Jesus, for he is the king of all kings. Wow, amazing, right? But what really struck me about this uh, story is about, when the soldiers started to continue what he's saying to this uh, servant, he said that, when I count the number of dots in this deck of cards, I count it 365 days. We see that 365 does, which is the 365 days in a year. And this deck of cards is 52 cards. This is the what? Numbers of weeks in a year. And there are four suits of this card. Which what? Represents the four seasons in a year. Which are the spring, summer, fall, and winter. And each suit contains 13 parts. These are exactly 13 weeks in a quarter. So what really is me about this type of part? The way it was explained is really amazing. You cannot deny that this is the truth for people. It's like the Bible. This is the truth. And so, this young soldier said to the sergeant, So when I talk to God, all I have to do is have this whole deck of cards. And the sergeant just stood there after a minute with tears in, in his eyes and pain in his heart. He said to this young soldier, Can I borrow the deck of cards? Well, for us, these sacrifices, like a soldier who will sacrifice his life for his country, for us, we are sacrificing something for our Christian life. And this sacrifice that we're going to do is a living sacrifice in which ourselves. By accepting Jesus Christ, will be now the center of our life. And for us, a lot of us over here already started really putting aside themselves and putting Jesus Christ as the center of your life. And I hope that most of us over here will finish this race. <laughs> because when, when God tested Abraham by sacrificing his only son that was promised by God, to be given to them. And it took him hundred years to have Isaac. And then God asked him to sacrifice his own son. What? That's really what we call a total sacrifice. Only son, you waited for so many years, hundred years, and then God will ask you to sacrifice your own son. But because Abraham had this faith in this one God. And he said, Well, I'll do it. So he was obedient. Even though he really loved his son, he is obedient to God and had faith in God. And by that time on, God said to Abraham, well, uh, you have shown your uh, faith in me, and you don't have to sacrifice your son. However, God, because out of love for us, because we are sinful, sacrifice, a perfect sacrifice, and that is what? His only son, the perfect lamb. And being perfect, he was able to redeem us from our weaknesses. 
that's a, really a sacrifice that even the devil cannot offer to us. However, for us to be back again, to be with God, our salvation lies in our faith. And the faith can only be uh, can only be uh, fulfilled by accepting Jesus Christ. And I hope we're going to finish our our journey because our salvation, as what Pastor Bernadette said, is a long journey. And we're just starting this uh, journey for us to uh, because it's what Pastor said every now and then. The face of God is shining in this place. I hope you can see it because I have seen it. Thank you. Let us pray. God the Father, we glorify your name. We bless you. And for my fellow student, we are uh, really blessed that you have given us the opportunity to serve you. Amen. Supervisor of the Pacific Coast and Valleys, if you can please come forward to give us a benediction tonight. And before Dennis comes and speaks to us, I would also like to thank Frank for helping us translate to one of the things that we have to do. I said that we're going to have a reunion of pastors, Hispanos, here in Oxnard, California. Pretty soon we're going to have a Ventura, California, we're going to be having a Hispanic Pastors Conference that Frank will be helping us lead. And Frank will be helping us lead. And Frank will be helping us lead. How many of those new pastors would you like to be there? How many of those new pastors would you like to be there? Todos, okay? You're all invited, okay? Okay. Would you stand with me as we pray? Puede ponerse de pie mientras oramos. And while we had the opportunity to uh, applaud and to cheer, <laughs> I thought you'd like to extend your hand in prayer for them as well. Why don't you just extend your hand to receive what they're praying for? Amen. 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 Let's pray together. Father God, it is with gratitude that we approach you this evening. Que nos a ti esta noche. Gratitude for faculty and administration who have served us. For family and friends who have supported us. Por familiares que nos han apoyado. And for the Holy Spirit who has sustained us. Y por el Espíritu Santo que nos ha sostenido. But our gratitude is joined with wisdom in this moment. Pero nuestra gratitud se une a la sabiduría en este momento. Because we understand the difference between very important items tonight. Porque entendemos la diferencia en puntos. From the country of Mexico, del país de México, Flaviano España Escobar. Graduating with honors, del país de Guatemala, graduando con honores, Lady Espinosa. From the Philippines, de las Islas Filipinas.
from the country of Mexico. <laughs> from the Philippines, graduating with high honors. When morning gilds the skies, my heart awaking cries, may Jesus Christ be praised. A light gap work and pray, to Jesus I repair, may Jesus Christ be praised. The night becomes as day When from the heart we say May Jesus Christ be praised The powers of darkness fear When this sweet chant they hear May Jesus Christ be the graduates of LAMS, our Bible school. And uh, the existence of the Bible school is from 2011 and then up to 2014, a very short life of the Bible school because they dissolved it also. 
And then, what a coincidence. There are two students, okay, Benjamin Jose and Joanna Jose, who are the co-employee of my nephew, Jasper, at Cedar Sinai. These are the nurses, okay. This is really fun. So now everybody is getting the picture. That church over that in the Sun Valley is not an ordinary church, okay? This is the blue room where I stayed before around, uh, I think, uh, November uh, 2007. And then uh, around December, uh, Don Jose is with me because I'm alone in the church, okay? And this place is like a bodega. Uh, this, uh, this is the bodega storage of Pastor Eli before. You cannot see me even inside and don't say. And it's good. Don't he say with me because one time, you know, it overload. Because there's a, there's a lot of refrigerator or anything in this room. And it, a fire started and it's good. Don't say it's there. If not, you'll be toasted. This is another brother in Christ. This is Jose Hernandez. I call him Don Jose. Anyway, Don Jose, I introduced him to Rocky Prince. So he worked with Rocky Prince 2011. He is with Rocky Prince in the aqua farming tech. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm, more, I'm also a very uh, compassionate person because we are only receiving a little money in the church. So anyway, uh, Rocky loves Don Jose because he is a hard-working person. And he also helped uh, Rocky in planting some Moringa. And also when we planted Moringa in that vacant church of the, uh, the vacant lot of the church at the back, Okay, Don Jose have this kind of gift, like he have a green thumb, anything that he plant will grow, okay? Another room that we use as a small chapel, okay, before. Okay. Uh, it's also considered uh, a when these corporate Good pastors came over, even this small chapel, okay, they removed everything. I have the video when we are uh, repainting it. And then now look what is it now. It is empty. This is where those renters are staying, those independent churches, they're using this one as a chapel. So we lost a lot also over here. Those are the properties of this church. I don't know where this corporate pastor put it. We lost it. And then, again, how stupid this uh, corporate pastor. They put their nursery. But once you go inside, where is the nursery? Okay? How stupid are these people? And then they put there the number one sign. Then they said, yeah, that is the unit number one that I took possession. They should have put there, I took possession of the nursery. <laughs> That's funny, man. Three small rooms. And this one, uh, it's still dark. Okay, cannot see. Okay, this is used uh, like the, uh, for exercise, exercises and this room is the video room uh, where I do my uh, videos on which I am the only official staff or personnel that use this room because all the equipments that I use in my videos are inside this room.
and this room is only a small room and this is the only room that they put in number one number and they just put it uh, the number one is like is an, in a bound back paper printed and they uh, put it on the door that I use as a video room for my job okay and they put the number one number and that is the only room that has the number one number okay and this is a room that don't have even any built-in uh, closet this is a small room and here's another room okay that is used for storage all right and this is another one that is a library okay. Okay. so all the books are here so they call it the library and then there is another office uh, a room used by another pastor as an office okay a small room also and this uh, door is a storage or storage and that door is leading outside the so building. now everybody that knew me is asking how come you landed in that small church in San Bali you help them okay to revive that dying church and they be even evicted you come on man explain it to me Another brother in Christ, Non Yabo, he was the one who bought the Airstream where I stayed from 2008 to 2015 after they, are, they forced Ron Yabo to remove it. So we have no choice but to sell it because they're going to call a towing company and they say it is abandoned. How stupid these people are. And then the district administrator even talked to Noni Abo March 15, and he know everything about what's going on in this church and how stupid this guy is. He even what? After we have an agreement, he filed a UD case against me. Oh, come on, man. He even tried to bribe me. If I'm going to receive $50,000, is that enough for you to go on with your life? I said, no. We are three workers, me, Don Jose, and Brother Barry, that will cost them almost half a million dollars, including the payback, three years. This is where I met also Pastor Bermudez, Pastor Efrain Manuel, and Pastor Maria Guerrero, and we started this worldwide evangelism by putting it in the internet, and I'm recording the Bible study every day, okay? This is the email that the district administrator sent to Noni Abo, and Noni Abo gave it to me. So it's clearly stated here that we have already an agreement so that we can continue with our normal life, okay? Another testimonial. This is one of our students in our Bible Institute in Lambs, Pastor Ronnie Tihada. Okay? And he is now have this, uh, this is really uh, amazing. He is now Dr. Ronnie Tihada. Why he become a doctor? Okay, this is his resume. He was discipled by Pastor Dr. Ephraim Manuel. Okay, and here is he now preaching, Dr. Ronnie Tejada. 
recorded in my Obama phone. Presence, Lord God, we are refusing to entertain fear, we are refusing to entertain worry and anxiety, but we are choosing to trust you, Lord God, and to love you with all of our hearts, mind, soul, and strength, because we know that we are more than conqueror in Christ Jesus our Lord. We know that we can do all three things through Christ who gives us strength. And we know that we will be able to overcome this pandemic because our Lord Jesus, our King Jesus, has overcome the world. We pray all this, Lord, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, our King Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. And amen. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. I am very excited once again uh, to see you. And uh, truly, like what I said earlier, we are blessed. Can you say to your neighbor, we are blessed. We are blessed. That we can see each other even over the internet. Uh, truly, uh, the Lord uh, provided the way that, uh, you know, the, the, the fellowship and the service of the believers will not be interrupted. Uh, truly, God always provide. Amen? Because uh, last month, I, I talked about this, that uh, even this technology, we all know that uh, uh, all of this came from God. You know, all of the... Okay, let's say amen and hallelujah. And praise our Lord Jesus Christ. This is another testimonial again, that once you believe in Jesus Christ, you will be a winner. And the Holy Spirit is going to guide you, lead you to tell the truth not lies. So now, this will be a testimonial. So I hope these pastors from the corporate will learn their lesson.